Meet the LSD, landing ship dock, the newest and biggest of all the Navy's landing craft. 457 feet long, displacement 4,055 tons, making 17 knots. She's a big ship and a fast ship. She can be used either as a floating dry dock or as a transport for smaller landing craft and amphibious vehicles. All the activity on the ship revolves around the well. This gigantic hollow is 43 feet wide and 395 feet long. It runs to within 62 feet of the ship's bow. But the forward 104 feet are under this superstructure. At the forward end of the well, under the superstructure, is a half deck that projects out like a shelf. Here is a fully equipped machine shop. This machine shop connects with the shipfitters and carpenter shop. All repair jobs on ships dry docked in the well can be handled from here. Set into the bulkhead directly below the carpenter shop is a powerful capstan. When the well is flooded, this cable can be used to snake ships into the well from the open sea. Set flush into the deck of the well are pad eyes so vehicles can be dogged down. Racks along the sides of the well hold the dogs when not in use. On the ship's main deck, on either side of the well, are set two powerful 35-ton cranes. These cranes can be used for repair jobs on ships dry docked in the well. Or they can be used to hoist and lower the ship's two LCVPs. They can also unload vehicles from landing craft alongside the LSD, lowering them into the well. A crane is used to support the hose when the LSD fuels at sea. In addition to these two big cranes, there's a small traveling crane that moves back and forth under the superstructure. This traveling crane runs back as far as the carpenter shop. At the after end of the wall is the stern gate. This gate prevents the well shipping water during a sea. To lower the gate, it must first be undogged. Lowering the gate does not flood the well. That has to be done by flooding the ship's ballast tanks and sinking her to whatever depth is desired. The gate is lowered by wire ropes fed off capstans on the port and starboard sides of the well walls. But when the gate is fully lowered, it is held by these heavy wire preventers, each equipped with a powerful shock absorber. During certain loading operations, the gate is subjected to very heavy strains, and the lowering lines by themselves would not be strong enough to hold it. Raising and lowering the ship is done from the ballast control room, a small room set on the starboard wall of the well. The ballast control officer calls the pump room, and an electrician throws a switch, putting him in control of the ship's ballast tanks. At the same time, the sea suction valves are opened. This lets water into the two main injection lines, one port and one starboard, which feed all the ballast tanks. The tanks will flood by gravity, but the pumps are started to force water into the lines and complete ballasting more rapidly. Now the ballast control officer, by simply pressing buttons, can open any tank he wishes and allow the water from the main injection lines to flood it. The ship is now sunk by her ballast tanks to whatever depth the well needs to be filled. As the ship is ballasted down, water comes in over the open stern gate to fill the well. The sea chests, set into the well deck, are also opened and help to flood the well. If desired, the well can be flooded by these sea chests alone with the stern gate closed. The LSD is a valuable ship, and loaded down with several million dollars worth of cargo, she's an A number one double priority target for Jap bombers. So the LSD is heavily gunned. Forward, there's a five inch 38, and two quad 40s. On the port and starboard well walls are installed six 20-millimeter anti-aircraft batteries, three on a side. And aft of the 20s are twin 40s to make sure the LSD carries a sting in her tail. 
In addition to the six 20s lining the well, there are 10 other 20s placed in strategic locations to greet dive bombers. One of the main uses of the LSD is to transport small landing craft from one theater to another. Once the well is flooded, the boats can enter under their own power. Steadying lines from the LSD help the crews guide their boats into place. The well is wide enough to take three LCMs abreast, but the extreme forward part of the well, under the superstructure, narrows slightly, and only two LCMs can be placed there side by side. When the well is completely loaded with landing craft, the ballast tanks are pumped out. The ship is raised, and the LSD gets underway with her load. To launch the boats, the well is flooded and the LCMs move out under their own power. The LSD can also be used to transport fully loaded landing craft to within a few miles of a combat area and then launch them at a beachhead. The LSD herself cannot hit the beach, but she can carry this loaded LCT and two others like her to within striking distance. A large landing craft, like an LCT, should approach the opening of the well from slightly upwind and drift down into position. As the LCT comes in, port and starboard lines are passed to her. A turn is taken with the hauling part of the lines around the capstans on the LSD. These lines guide the ship in. As the ship passes over the stern gate, steadying lines are passed and the hauling lines on the capstans are thrown off. There is a tendency for the ship's bow to strike against the sides of the well, as a ferry sometimes does when entering the slip. If the ship begins to swing, the men on the steadying lines can check her by taking a turn around a cleat. The men on the steadying line should always keep moving forward with the ship. A common mistake for the men receiving a line is to stay in the same place and allow the ship to pass them as she enters the well. Their line then becomes useless in controlling the vessel. With all three LCTs in the well, the LSD is raised and the well emptied. The flat-bottomed LCTs will ride easily without blocks. The steadying lines are then secured to keep the craft from shifting. When the LSD has transported them to within reach of the beachhead, the well is flooded and the LCTs move out, still fully loaded. These ships are ready to hit the beach the moment their keels pass over the stern gate. Transportation by LSD means that the landing craft do not need to be launched over the side of a ship, nor do they have to be broken down and reassembled. They do not even have to be reloaded. With an LSD, the whole problem of transportation is as simplified as it is possible to make it. In addition to her job of transporting smaller craft, the LSD can also be used as a floating dry dock. The well can accommodate ships up to an LCIL in size. For the LCI, keel blocks are first secured to the deck of the well. Then the well is flooded to whatever depth is necessary. With a large craft, the lines are usually shot out to her with line throwing guns. If there is a heavy sea running or a strong wind blowing, the captain of the LSD may prefer to use the snaking line from the capstan at the forward end of the well to haul the ship in. Once the LCI is in place, the well is raised and the repair crews are able to go to work under her keel. Repaired and ready for action again, the LCI goes back to sea. When the blocks are being either installed or removed, they are much easier to handle if a foot or two of water is in the well. 
Then the heavy blocks can be floated into place. Carrying them back and forth by hand is a tough job. The LSD can be loaded with tanks or trucks while at sea. A landing craft carrying the vehicles can drop her ramp on the lowered stern gate of the LSD so that the vehicles can drive into the well. But first, ramp blocks have to be fitted into the stern gate to keep the ramp of the landing craft from sliding too far up. After the ramp blocks are in place, the after part of the well is flooded to a depth of about two feet. This is to take some of the strain off the stern gate when the vessels are surging in a sea. Lines are passed to the LCT as soon as possible and then hauled taut using the LSD's port and starboard capstans. As the LCT comes closer to the mouth of the well, these steadying lines are kept constantly taut. The ramp of the LCT moves in over the Lord stern gate until it is stopped by the blocks. As there is a tendency for the ship to ride up into the well in spite of the ramp blocks, the skipper of the LCT goes slowly astern on his engines. While the lines hold the ship in against the blocks, the tanks cross the ramp into the well. This puts a terrific strain on the stern gate of the LSD. But with the help of the preventers, the gate can take it. In calm weather, flooding the well as shown here is not necessary. If the two ships are surging in a heavy sea, there is a slight chance that the stern gate might be lifted sufficiently to strike the bottom of the LCT. By flooding the after end of the well a foot or more, the gate is brought lower and out of danger. As soon as the tanks are loaded, the LSD gets underway with her cargo. The LSD has reached her destination. The tanks are to be loaded aboard an LST. The big LST requires her own set of blocks. The holes for these big blocks are set a little farther up on the gate than the others. The big blocks are used only with an LST or an LSM. All other craft normally use the smaller set. But in a very heavy sea, it is sometimes better to use the large blocks for all marrying operations. The ramps of the landing craft may be thrown over the smaller blocks by the pitching of the ships. But if the big blocks are used with small craft, they stand high above the low ramps. The drivers of the vehicles being loaded or unloaded have to be careful of them. With the blocks in place, the LST makes her approach. The lines thrown to the LST are crossed. This gives the men a better lead on the big ship. The ramp of the LST is hauled against the blocks and the lines are held taut with the capstans. The LST engines are backed slowly to eliminate danger of the ship surging forward in a seaway. With the LST held against the blocks by the lines, the tanks are loaded into the ship's tank deck.
The LST retracts and the operation is completed. To transport the maximum number of vehicles, two auxiliary decks are fitted into the well with ramps leading down to the stern gate. These decks are called the mezzanine and the top deck. The top deck runs aft from the superstructure, while the mezzanine runs under the superstructure up to half deck. The top deck stands approximately four and a half feet higher than the top of the well wall, and the mezzanine is about the same distance lower. There is a nine and a half foot clearance between the top deck and the mezzanine and the same clearance between the mezzanine and the well deck. Stanchions along the well deck help support the mezzanine. Both decks have ramp lifting trestles, so the ramps can be hoisted out of the way when the deck below has to be loaded. To load ducks or other amphibious vehicles, the stern gate is simply dropped and the vehicles driven up the ramps. As soon as the top deck is loaded, the ramp must be lifted to clear the entrance to the mezzanine deck. The lines from the ramp hoists are carried to the capstans and the ramps are hoisted. The ramps are in two sections. Either section can be raised or lowered independently of the other. When the ramps reach the top of the trestle, they are secured by pins and loading the mezzanine deck is begun. If a large number of vehicles are to be loaded, they should be backed on. So when disembarking, they can drive down the ramps bow first. Obviously, with the decks loaded, there would be no room for a vehicle to turn as this duck is doing. In loading amphibious vehicles, stern first, the after part of the well should be ballasted down several feet to make it easier for the vehicle to pass over the stern gate. After both the top and mezzanine decks have been loaded, the mezzanine ramp is hoisted and the vehicle is driven onto the well deck. If desired, the LSD can be married with a landing craft and the well deck loaded with tanks and trucks. These vehicles can also mount the ramps to either of the other two decks. The LSD is equipped with all the know-how the Navy has been able to acquire in four years of amphibious warfare. She is the most elaborate and perfectly equipped of all the amphibious fleet yet to come out of this war. She is also the most complicated. No ship is better than her crew. Here is your ship. The rest is up to you. Mm -hmm.